Hi everyone and welcome back to the new and improved inventory system series that has been rebooted because I just wasn't happy with the way the last one was going. Uh, there was too, few, uh, too many bugs and uh, yeah, so rather than try and fix it and make it work with the bugs it had, I basically redid it from scratch. And so the whole project is now available to gold patrons over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey plus many of the first few episodes are up there too. So in this first episode, we'll be going over the setup for our inventory system, looking at the component, its various functions and variables it will need, as well as the struct we'll need for the item itself. So let's get started. So the first thing to note about inventory systems is that we need to first of all set up whether or not we're going to have an ordered list or an Arnold list. Now, what we'll be doing for this one is an ordered list, meaning that each slot is going to be unique to itself and that each one will have a unique ID, meaning I can then transfer slots, move them around, organize them as I wish by dragging and dropping them around my scene. So we're going to go ahead and set up the, first of all, the inventory component, which will then be able to apply to both the player and other objects to create containers. So let's start off by creating that component. We're going to go into our content browser down here, and I make a nice new folder to keep all of this in. And inside here, we're going to add a new blueprint class. Go to Act Component down here, and we're going to call this one Inventory System. So the Inventory System is a actor component, which means we can attach it to other actors to add extra functionality and variables that we can use freely throughout the game. So we're going to open this up. And I usually like to start with the core basics that I'm going to need in order for our inventory to work or any sort of system to work. So we'll set up some basic events and functions to handle this stuff. First of all, let's clear this default stuff. We don't want this. And instead, let's set up a couple of functions. So the first function I'm going to add in here is going to be an add to inventory. Quite obviously, we need a function here to enable us to add our content to our way of storing the slots next we're also going to need over move from inventory and then we're going to need some variables and the first variable we're going to have is so inventory size and we'll want to store this as an integer that way we have a whole number indicating how many slots we're going to have in our inventory here now, alongside this, we're going to need our content. Now, that is the, going to be the meat and bones of all of this. And this content is going to be an array of structs. Now, structs are ways of storing loads of variables together. In this case, we'll sto be storing two in an ordered fashion. So, let's go ahead and create the struct for this. So we're going to go into our blueprint menu here. And we're going to create a new structure. And the key definition for this is that you're going to use F. And then you type in the name of your struct. So we're going to do slot struct. And let's open this up. Now I did briefly mention that this will involve two types of variables. The first one would be an ID name, which would be the item. So item ID. And that'd be a name. And the other one would be a quantity. Would be a integer. So I can then go back to my inventory system and in here we're going to create our variable or our content. So we're going to call this content. And in our variable type, we're going to search for our f slot struct to find it there. And this is just a singular one. So to make it store multiple things, we need to make this an array. So click on the little icon next to our variable type and change this to an array. And there we go. So to make this work for multiplayer, there's a couple of things we're going to set up here too. The first thing we need to do is make sure this whole component, this whole system, is going to be replicated. So we're going to go to class defaults, and you're going to go down to component replicates and turn that on. We are then also going to replicate our content array. So click on content array, and go over to the right hand side, you'll see replication. Change that to replicated. Now, when you do change this to replicated, what that does mean is that if the server changes the content of this inventory component, it will replicate it to all the clients as well. So we will be setting up some further functions to enable this, uh, but just know that for now, 
is replicated, only the server can change this content. Quite important, that. I'm going to click save, and then we're going to go back to our player character. And we're going to add it to our player character in the component list here. There we go. Now over here on the right hand side, you'll see inventory size is default into zero. I'm going to change that to 16. And content here, we're going to leave blank. But if you did want the player to start with some content, you can indicate that here just fine. Now in terms of the actual content, the actual items that you'll be picking up and spawning and so forth, uh, you will need to make a data table for this. And for this to work, we need to have some structure about what are the items that we need in our data table. So in that inventory so folder here, we're going to create another struct. This is going to be F item struct. And this is going to be a structure that contains all the details of the individual items. So notably, the first thing we'll want to know is their name. So what are they? That'd be a text field. Pick another one and this would be a description. We'll then probably have a thumbnail. So we'll need a thumbnail to be able to see it inside of our drag and drop interface. So I'm going to go in here and set that to a texture 2D. Okay. And hit save on that. Okay. And then we're going to add in here the item class that we want our item to be. So when we, the reason why we need this is if we then make it so we drop the item. We need to know what item we actually are dropping inside the environment as an actual thing. So we're going to go in here and set that to an actor and class reference. So you just hover over it and go over to class reference here. And you choose a class reference because if it doesn't exist yet in the world, you want to use a class reference. If it's a particular one in the world that already does exist, you want to use an object reference. And the last item we're going to add in here, for us at least, is going to be this stack size. This will be an integer. Now, a stack size would be how many items of that same class, same type, can be stacked into one slot. So, before it has to go into a new slot. Okay, so uh, if you picked up uh, 10 apples, you'll do anything, but you've only got five, slot, uh, five stack size, you're going to get two slots filled up with apples there. Okay. Um, but that's all we need here for now. But you, you could also add more stuff onto this. So, you could have things like extra details. So, like if you're doing like a merchant system, you could include things like buying and sell values you can also include things like their weight if you're doing an incumbent system whatever you may wish okay for us that'll do there and we'll just close that there and we're going to create our empty data table so you just right click inside of your content browser go to miscellaneous data table and then choose your f item struct okay we'll quiz one item data and it's in here where you can fill out the information about each item, which we'll do later on in another episode. And there you go, we've got the start of our inventory system ready to go. In the next episode, we're going to work on our interaction system, allowing our player to interact with items around the world in order to pick them up or put them into chests. So you can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. You can catch all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thanks for watching, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.